just the fan reactions. It's just, it's, it's amazing to watch. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Pop in the Culture, your weekly pop culture party. That's right, and I'm your host, Mr. Hollywood himself, Matt Demers. So much fun coming your way. I'll be sharing an interview with the hilarious Matty Carteropel. He'll be talking about his scene-stealing turns in movies like Free Guy and shows like Stranger Things. Don't want to miss it. But first, let's jump into those Hollywood headlines. All right, for those that don't know, this is the part of the show where we like to dissect some of the more interesting developments out there in Hollywood. Uh, and to help me break it all down, well, I got two gentlemen from Watch Mojo. That's right. Frank Pavan is here. Hey, Frank, how are you? I'm doing terrific, Matt. Thanks for having me on the show. I usually do a lot of the back end stuff and I watch all the episodes, make sure they're all uploaded correctly to YouTube. But I'm glad to be in person or virtually speaking with you today on the show. That's right. You're probably watching them be like, disagreeing with us and wanting to chime in. Well, now here's your chance. So right. don't hold back today. Uh, but look who else is joining us. Uh, he's the host of Watch Mojo's uh, musical podcast, music podcast. That's right. Inner Sleeve is the name of the show. Cassius Morris is his name. Hey, Cassius. Matt, thanks for having me on the show. The long-awaited appearance. And uh, if I do say so myself, well, I guess I can. Awesome performance so far. I've been, I've been checking it out. Very good. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Well, hey, listen, I'm so excited to have you both with me. Let's not waste time because the movie that everybody and their mother is talking about is, uh, well, it's Shang-Chi. It's Marvel's latest. And here are the numbers. By the way, we're in the midst of this recording. We're in the midst of the mm -hmm. long weekend. So that number is going to go uh, much bigger. But right now, uh, the debut is massive. They've already broken the Labor Day weekend. Uh, record, which was held by the Halloween reboot. And now it also becomes the second highest grossing movie of this year, uh, only behind Black Widow, another Marvel movie. But 71 wow. point, yeah, 71.4 million guys. And like I said, it is rising. Uh, Cassius, let's start with you. Shang-Chi, The Legend of the Ten Rings. Uh, this is a bit of an obscure character, but critics and fans seem to love it. Your take. You know, I think it's really good. Uh, I was sort of teetering on the idea of, well, is this maybe too obscure? Is this sort of out of left field? But looking at all the releases that have been coming out, it seems like there's so, so many reboots. That's the one thing that, that is really common. And frankly, I would rather see something that's maybe a little more obscure than the millionth reboot of, you know, insert franchise here. I think it keeps it more original. Um, I'd like to maybe see them go more along these lines. And the visuals for this movie, I mean, the graphics, sorry, the effects and everything, it just looks fantastic to me. So I'll, I'll probably definitely be checking this out. Yeah, I highly recommend it. If you're on the fence and if any of our uh, viewers are on the fence, I say watch it. You know, I'm a movie reviewer. It's pulsating with excitement and, and action. And like you said, the visuals and, and the way they choreograph those martial arts stuff is, is just great. Uh, Frank, I don't even know if you're a superhero guy. Uh, do you watch these Marvel things? And if so, is <sighs> Shang-Chi on your radar? I do not watch any superhero movies, Matt. What? It's, wow, wow. I, I, I think, honestly, I, I can't tell you the last time I went and got hyped up for a super movie hero. They're just not my uh, my forte, I guess. But How can you avoid it, though? There, there's so many. Th there are so many. I don't know. I kind of just stick to, to my very uh, small routine, my, my very, I guess you could call it na narrow-minded, shutter-eyed vision uh, <laughs> routine. No, I, I, I don't know. Superhero movies, they just kind of don't do it for me. Uh, but I did check this one out. I, I kind of I don't know how much I could add to this because I'm so much of a of a novice when it comes to superhero movies. I want to hear from yourself, someone who's well, uh, very astute when it comes to these things. So I, I'd rather hear from you than from me because I can't add that much to it. Well, I like the novice approach too. Someone that's that's an outsider looking in. So when you watch these trailers and you and by the way, have you heard of this character? Because I'm a superhero guy and I hadn't heard of him. Uh, prior to no the, never never heard of this character in my life i hadn't either by the way yeah <laughs> yeah i know uh but no i really did like it and i and i i'm gonna highly recommend it and speaking of obscure the next one on the slate for marvel is a movie called the eternals and i'm telling you the trailers aren't doing it for me i'm not sold and marvel rarely misses so i'm hoping to be very much surprised uh, when we go into theaters to watch this one, this is a gr this is one of those like team up group ones. So there's a big cast, Angelina Jolie's in there, and a bunch of other people. Cassius, have you seen that trailer for the Eternals? 
I didn't see that trailer, but that sounds like it promises to be a blockbuster. I mean, uh, you know, and, and like I say, if they keep going down this direction, I have no complaints at this point, as long as they continue to deliver, like you said, because they do have a reputation, you know, they, they set the standard very high. They have to continue to meet that standard. Yeah, no, for sure. So, I, I mean, like I said, Marvel rarely misses. So, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. And by the way, uh, if anyone out there is watching and, and you have thoughts about these obscure characters... Uh, who's the next one you want to see get a movie? Uh, and do you, do you guys have any superheroes that you're just waiting to see get a movie? Have they done them all? Uh, you know what? Being the not superhero guy, I'm always been I've always been interested with Flash. I feel like oh. have we had a Flash? We did though, right? A few years back, did we not? No, he he made a cameo. He's made okay. some cameos in the in yeah in the Zack Snyder films. Uh, good news, Frank. There hmm. is going to be a Flash movie coming our way. Oh. Cool. And like you, though, I think it's about darn time. Because okay, it, interesting. So wh why do you think so? Like, is he kind of the, the black sheep of the family, the, the forgotten <laughs> son or sibling? Well, he had a lot of success on TV. There's a CW series, yeah. The Flash, yeah. that, that's doing really well. It's still on. Uh, okay. So I think it was just a matter of getting getting that character on, on the big screen. And it's a different actor. It's a, a different portrayal so we'll we'll see uh i like is is, is it because some certain heroes are limited in what they can is he is he a limited superhero that's a good question i guess to build a movie around because he sort of has one power so to speak right right he yeah i think that's that could be part of it but if you look at his he's one of those heroes Frank, that's been around for for ages he's one right. of those what you call like a golden age hero so the backstories the stuff that you can pull from from his from the mm -hmm. past catalogs is huge. So there's a lot going on with that character. So I wouldn't say he's limited at the stories you could tell. Um, I don't. I think when it, when it comes to movies and DC especially, they want to focus on the big big names. Unlike Marvel that goes the obscure route, uh, DC focuses on Batman, Superman, mm -hmm. Flash is a little exactly. So Flash, I'm very much excited. Your Wonder Woman, of course, uh, is one of the pillars too. So. Lots of excitement with superheroes. Frank, you got to jump on the bandwagon. Yeah, I, I feel like I, I do. Uh, I don't know, man. It's just like, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. There's so much happening. And there's so many. I, I don't know where to start either. Were you drawn to any of them, like, as a kid? Like, what was it as maybe Spider-Man? Like, who well, would give the edge for you? Well, I mean, as a kid, I remember my dad was a huge Smallville fan. So, granted, you know, oh, Spider-Man, yeah, yeah, yeah. super. Superman, like that would probably be a good starting point, I assume. But uh, the Batmans are legendary. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I feel like there's, it's such a cluttered market now, though. I feel like there's so much <laughs> happening that I, I don't know where to really begin and what's good and what's not. Yeah. The movie, the movies are pretty good at, at filling in those novices like yourself. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, maybe a bit of back reading <laughs> would help True. too. Fair enough. All right, I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on and cash it. I'm expecting some hot takes uh, on your part, because the next ready to uh, go, yeah. The next guy I want to talk about, Kanye West. Man, okay, he's oh in the news for for a lot of things. The new the new album is out. It's uh, Donda, named after his uh, late mother. You know, Peppa Pig took a shot at him. That's right. <laughs> that like, yeah, Peppa Pig on Twitter. You know, hazed him because I guess Peppa Pig had an album that was rated a little higher. Uh, there's a Drake feud that's been reignited. You know, there's there's song lyrics that, that maybe insinuate that he cheated on Kim Kardashian uh, while they were married. I mean, a lot going on with Kanye. I mean, I'm assuming you've heard some of the tracks. Cassius, what's your take on this new album? You know, the album's interesting. Uh, I actually was playing some of it with with a friend of mine, and he was like, this doesn't even sound like Kanye, and I, I tend to agree, and I don't think that's a negative thing. You know, I think that sounding too much like your old music can limit you. Uh, it can maybe paint you into a corner or a box as to where you can take it. Um, and I think Kanye really stepped up for this record. Uh, and also, if I can say, like, the, the whole rollout with how he did it, it was hundreds of days late or something like that, uh, yeah. which he's often known for. And also, I don't know about you guys. Maybe, I mean, I don't know if I'm allowed to ask a question here. I know it's your show, but I think this Kim Kardashian thing might be a publicity stunt. Like, do you, think, do you guys feel like they're still together? Or I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> Um, it's a good question. It's a good question. With any time there's celebrities as big as Kim Kardashian involved, you got to wonder if there's publicity involved. Uh, so it could be. What do you, what do you make of the Drake thing, though? Because that, that seems to be picking up steam. Canada's own Drake. 
It's pretty uh, crazy but, that he's doing what he's doing. I mean, he, he went on, he leaked the song uh, yep. with Andre 3000 and Kanye, which has been a been a huge deal. You know, I'm worried that Drake's going to get himself in trouble either legally um, or, you know, maybe something else. It, it seems to be escalating to a point that I didn't really think would happen. I mean, when you infringe on somebody's copyright, that's pretty big when you also drag another artist in. And when you think about it from Drake's perspective, it must be very strange and he, he must kind of pinch himself because he was very open about looking up to Kanye through his entire artistry while he was young. So this must be a strange predicament for him to be in. Yeah, no, it is strange. Anytime you mention Kanye West or, or see him in, in photos or in headlines, Frank, um, is, is Kanye the genius? that Cassius is kind of painting that picture of, or is he out of his mind? In you know, I was thinking about this over the weekend and uh, um, a, qu a question that we kind of, I kind of ask myself a little bit. The dog is getting out of line there. Sorry, man. my dog is not a Kanye fan. <laughs> he knew, <laughs> he wanted knew we to were chime talking in. about someone controversial. Um, <laughs> are we able to separate the artist from the art or, or whatnot, right? And... Um, Donda aside, because it's still fresh, I, I feel like I am with Kanye. I feel like we know that he's that egotistical, pompous, narcissist type of personality. But I feel like his music just just, just hits different, especially like the old stuff. Like, you know, I have a bunch of his old songs. There's still It's still a, a party hit if, if you're, you're, you're together with friends or whatnot. Whenever an old Kanye song comes on, it's, it's one of the best to play that night. And I feel like I'm able to do that with Kanye. I feel like I'm, I am able to, to separate the artist from the art with him because I know how much of a peculiar person he is away from his music, but his music just resonates with so many people still. What is that party hit? Is it Gold Digger? Uh, no, it's, uh, well, Who Gonna Stop Me is a good one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Watch uh, the throne. Gotta, okay. gotta have it. Yeah. Right, right, right. That one's. I mean, Cassius knows. Yeah, those ones are good. Uh, those, those ones are good. And I, and I feel like this was such a, a strange week weekend because of the. I mean, the whole clash with Donda versus CLF, Certified Lover, uh, CLB, Certified Lover Boy. I mean, yeah. that that was huge too. Like, uh, how, can we? Can I have your guys' takes on these two albums? Like, well, how are we feeling? feels like Christmas for hip hop fans at this point. I mean, it's, you know, at the end of the day, when, when two guys get in competition like this, really the winner is us. Uh, I think right. the people who are losing is them. Uh, you know, unless you look at it from the perspective that all publicity is good publicity. Matt, you could probably weigh in on that. I mean, do you agree with that or do you think that that's not all press is good press? No, I think so. Anytime you make those headlines, anytime you're you're chatted about, uh, it, it's a good thing, uh, especially with people that, are, that aren't aware of, of those release dates and and, and what's new. Uh, I'm a I'm a Jersey fan. Let's uh, Drake mm -hmm. got to represent. Now, uh, what what do you like from him? Do you like his straightforward hip hop or do you like his more sing song type of stuff? No, I like I like his hip hop. I like I like his style and and yeah, I, I, there's just something about him that I that I really that I really enjoy. Uh, Kanye's different. And I think when you look at someone like Kanye West and you see those pictures, he's got that thing over his head and he's dressed kind of out there. But you know, like those people that, that are, that are those true artists and they're, and they're not influenced by anything else around them. And it's all what's in their head. You got to kind of respect that, right? You got to yeah. tip the hat. It, it's a book of the outfit, though, because that's one thing that I've been I see people trying to decipher it and say it's this meaning and that meaning. I'm not sure how much meaning there is to it. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't even know what outfit you guys are talking about. That's so out of touch I am with it. Like what? Like an, people are construing his, his outfits now? He's basically his... wearing a, ma a full face mask. We haven't even been able to see his facial expression oh. for months now. Okay. And it's, it's been, I don't know. I, don't I think, know, honestly, a... I've come to just not be shocked with with anything that Kanye West does. I, <laughs> that's yeah, normal I mean, by his, in your eyes. I guess that He could sense. wear a full uh, hazmat suit for two years. I wouldn't <laughs> judge. I wouldn't even bat an eye. But that's it. Yeah, him and, and, and Lady Gaga, they can wear whatever they want and no one bats an eye. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm uh, moving on from Kanye. This is going to be okay. a strange transition. Kanye West to Seinfeld. Uh, hey, I got to mention this because I, and I don't know about you two, and I'll get you to chime in. I'm a mega Seinfeld fan. I really am. Just anytime I come across one of the reruns, I have to watch it because they're just too, too funny. Get a load of this. Netflix, it's coming to Netflix, folks. Uh, October 1st, mark it on your calendars if you are a fan. All 180 episodes are coming there, and Netflix doled out a whopping $500 million plus to get a little show about nothing on their streaming wow. service. Uh, Cassius, wow. are you a Seinfeld fan? Tell me you are. 
I definitely like Seinfeld. Yeah, I'm newer to it. Um, I'm just scratching the surface. I probably couldn't tell you all the best episodes. But look, look, it's a unique brand of humor that I don't think can really be ignored. If you're looking at the footprint of the footprint of television, it's super, super hard to ignore Seinfeld. And I think that if, even if you're a casual TV watcher, I would say you should probably try and get into this. And it deserves credit where it's due. I mean, imagine the people who laughed at Seinfeld saying, oh, it's a show about nothing. It'll never make it. Look at him now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, him and Larry David created uh, quite the gem uh, in so many catchphrases. And the cast, I mean, we're talking about perfect casting. You got your Elaine, your George, your Kramer, uh, Jerry, of course. Uh, even the guest stars or co-stars, your Newmans, they're all fantastic. Uh, Frank, Seinfeld? So, okay, so here's here's my quick take on it. I am very much for it coming to Netflix because now I could I could watch it in full. I feel like I've always just watched you know, an episode here, an episode there on TV. I was never, maybe, I don't know. I mean, I feel like people my age love the show, so it's not like I missed it. It's not like I'm, I'm too young for it, I don't think. No. But it was just never on. I didn't know, or maybe, you know, I was just not as attentive on the TV as not when, I, when a Seinfeld episode came on. I was like, okay, I'm going to sit here for 30 minutes and watch it. I just feel like I missed it when I was a bit younger. But yeah. now that it's coming, I'm so for it. I'm not a... I am not a friends over Seinfeld, uh, Seinfeld, and, and Seinfeld's going to be tossed to the wayside. I feel like, and that's uh, for some reason those two shows are just always connected. It's weird. I'm so glad you mentioned. I was thinking that too. <laughs> the first thought whenever you mention one of those shows is the other, as the other show that comes to mind. So I'm a huge Friends fan for sure, but I, it's not like I hold it onto another level of Seinfeld. I'm going to give Seinfeld the exact same treatment as I give Friends once it comes to Netflix. I'm going to binge it all for sure. And imagine if Netflix still had both. Or would have both now? <laughs> yeah, that would I be, I'd never leave my house. I mean, no. <laughs> yeah, people people that love Friends, they watch the entire series and then they start all over again. Yeah. Uh, it's on HBO Max. Uh, they had the big reunion, of course, Friends. I'm so glad right. you mentioned Friends because that is massive. And streaming services love those type of shows. It's the uh, the bingeability and mm-hmm. Friends is right up there. I think Seinfeld will be just just as popular uh, on old Netflix. What about you guys about other shows? Any uh, sitcoms or, 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 or just maybe a show that you want to see on a streaming service so you can binge? Maybe something you didn't get into or something that you really liked that you're not seeing now? Or is everything out? Cash Go ahead, Frank. Wanna, you, okay. Well, okay. <laughs> um, well, well, I mean, I, right now I'm watching Ozark on Netflix. Terrific show. That's I'm, great. Matt, we've so. spoken about this. I'm in, I'm, I've just finished episode uh, season two. So I'm entering oh. season three. Just wait. Okay, I will. And so that's great. That's going well. I want to get into Ted Lasso, though. Okay, I feel you, like that's blowing up everywhere. Yeah. I am on social medias. I just see Ted Lasso, uh, Jason Stakis, but I've, I haven't got my, my eyes on it yet, so I want to give that a go. Apple TV Plus is where you need to go for the Ted Lasso. <laughs> that's the thing. For all okay. these shows, you need it's 500 right. different uh, right. That's the thing. And maybe, I don't know if you wanted to chime in on Ted Lasso a little bit, but I wanted to, I, I don't have Disney Plus, and I feel like I've heard so many great things over the summer and, and or during the spring leading into the summer about so many different shows that I just haven't, I haven't gotten to Mandalorian. I've heard great reviews. I just haven't gotten to do it because I don't have the subscription. So I feel like it's got a great reputation. I feel like I'm missing out a little bit there. And just to watch watch reruns of old movies like that, that's a good time too. So. It's a good, yeah. It's a very good question. You know, last episode we were chatting with uh, with Ricky and Kira about the essential subscriber mm-hmm. uh, services that you need, and uh, I think the consensus was that Disney Plus was actually maybe higher than than Netflix because of all those great shows, the Mandalorian, all the Marvel stuff, and 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 their past catalog. And now with the Fox acquisition, you know, they're they're putting all those uh, Fox uh, mm-hmm. movies and shows on there. So uh, Disney Plus is really something that I would highly recommend people get. I mean, Netflix. Uh, worldwide billions upon billions of subscribers. They probably won't be beat anytime soon. Um, Hard to avoid. Yeah, mm-hmm. of course. Disney Plus has a massive reputation, though, and I mean, I, I definitely would probably recommend it. And just to add to the two little quick points before we move on, uh, I'd love to see The Sopranos on Netflix. Oh. Um, I know that that's a show that, just like you were saying about Friends, I mean, at least me, you just keep rewatching. It's like fine wine, and I think it's very... Uh, very timely. Some of the themes about America, consumerism, just some of those, some of those social themes are is very it on timely. Crave? It is that? on Crave. Okay. That's in Canada. In Canada, it. yeah, and we can get in it. Canada, on. yeah. See, I guess that's the thing. Every country is different with it too. <laughs> that's true. Um, and also, just one tip of the hat to Seinfeld. 
Um, great show for guest actors. When you would see a comedian or somebody yeah. playing like a mechanic or something, yeah, yeah. those people would always shine. And I just, I always figured uh, that was a good thing from Seinfeld because you could tell he kind of came from a comic. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. That's the comics comic show. Uh, all right, yeah. guys. Oh, I'm going to throw out Melrose Place. Uh, and I know okay. that might sound strange. I have a celebrity crush on Heather Locklear. So that's Heather. not that out there, man. I think that you're in good company with a lot of people in that one. That's true. <laughs> guilty. I'm all about the guilty pleasure. All right. Uh, <laughs> hey, Cassius Frank, thank you so much for chiming in on all those news stories. We want to hear from you. If you have comments on what to see on those streaming services, those must watches, drop it in the comments. Are you a Seinfeld fan? And what about Kanye? I want to hear your thoughts. Hey, don't go anywhere, guys, because us, well, we got to go beyond the list. All right, for those that don't know, this is the part of the show where we like to dig deep in Watch Mojo's vast archives of top 10 lists, pluck one out, and go beyond that list with our own personal opinions. And don't hold back and be honest, Frank and Cassius, when we go through it. And by the way, Frank, I kind of tailored this towards you because it's a sports related list. You are the host of Watch Mojo's sports related podcast, The Water mm-hmm. Boys. Tell us about that. Thank you for for uh, for that intro, Matt. I appreciate it. Yeah, so essentially my role for Watch Mojo is kind of like overseeing, coordinating, producing, and hosting uh, their network of podcasts. So we have a sports podcast called the Water Boys Podcast, where uh, Julian McKenzie is the other co-host, who we, we, on a weekly basis, we review everything that's happening in the world of sports. Any sport you can think of, we probably cover it. And of course, we have Inner Sleeve on Sound Mojo, and of course, Pop in the Culture here on More Mojo. So that's kind of the, the little... Port, uh, the, the umbrella of shows that we've got going and thank you for having the sports related list uh by the way i put on the my nfl jersey ah. i've got a few uh a football and a, and a and a hat over here it's opening week in the nfl by the way the day this episode goes live it is week one of team the, spirit uh, over uh, here th- yeah thursday night uh football so anyways thank you for this list matt and uh you could if you if you any sports fans out there interested the links will be down below in the description so you could check that out as well but i'm interested to get to this matt i'm, I'm looking forward to this list all right well let's let's not waste and i think we'll find some football yeah. players well maybe maybe not on this list because the the topic is top 10 acting performances by athletes that's right uh, sometimes they go well sometimes not so well mm-hmm. these are the ones <laughs> That went well. Okay, supposedly. I want you to be honest whether you agree or disagree. So essentially, uh, it's just that. Athletes that appeared in movies, not counting those in martial arts. That's a whole other list that you can find out there. But anybody else, athletes of all sorts. All right, uh, number 10 on the list. Maybe he should be a little higher. I don't know if he deserves to be at the very, very bottom. Why, it's Michael Jordan in a little movie called Space Jam in 1996 with the Looney Tunes. They rebooted it very recently. Um, Cassius, Michael Jordan, Looney Tunes? I'm sorry. Space- Why is this at the bottom of the list? Yeah. I mean, two thumbs up. I mean, listen, I think probably, in my opinion, the most iconic sports role. How does it get more iconic than being in a movie with Bugs Bunny and you're not even a, a cartoon. I mean, I can't top that. That's the thing, too. He had to act. I mean, the guy's not an actor, but he's he's a very charismatic guy. But he had to act like with, like, green screens and, like, pretend there's a Bugs Bunny. Like, that's not easy to do for any actor, let alone an athlete. Frank, did you see Space Jam? Of course. One of my childhood uh, favorite sports movies. And going off of what you just said, Matt, I think that's completely accurate. I think that Michael Jordan, for as legendary as he is, he, you know, this is an uncomfortable space for him acting, right? And he definitely held his own with fictitious characters who he did not even see when acting. You know what I mean? We always talk about certain people who aren't actors coming into the acting space and being carried by the pros, right? And making them a little bit more comfortable, a little more at ease. He didn't really have that aside from Bill Murray. Who, right? Like he was in the movie. Well, of I think Bugs Bunny's pretty pro. I don't know. I mean, Bugs you're Bunny's shade pretty, Bugs pretty Bunny. pro, but you can't see him. So <laughs> exactly, he can't Which be makes carried Michael by someone. Michael Jordan who's, even more pro. <laughs> exactly, he can't be carried as much by some something that's not even there. So I think he did a great job. This definitely deserves to be higher on the list, in my opinion. I think so too. I think so too. Yeah. And what, could we get him a, a cameo in the sequel? He wouldn't even show up. I was expecting mm. some Michael Jordan, some MJ. Okay, uh, let's move on to number nine. Uh, you knew he had to be there. It's The Rock, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. You 
you know, you think of him now as more of an actor than an athlete, but you got to remember this guy came from the world of professional wrestling. Uh, that's where the name The Rock comes from. And uh, let's see what movie uh, this one is uh, crediting him for. It's Fast Five in 2011. I think there may be more movies that he would uh, prove himself in. But at the time of this list, Fast Five. But I think we can all agree that The Rock, at least I can say, is a great actor. Frank? 100%. I think he's terrific in anything you put him in. I, I, I mean, I feel like he is a bit typecasted in the roles that he does. Big, brute, muscle man type of thing. A little, <laughs> a little bit. But he is very diverse. Um, I, ha I am completely... Uh, I, ha I have no clue what happens in the Fast Five realm. Uh, that's another movie series that I just... <laughs> oh, thank God. Gone. I thought it was gone. just me. Okay. Gone. I have no clue what happens there. I've obviously seen the hype around it and everything, but I've just never watched it. But he was terrific in Jumanji, I felt like. Um, oh, yeah. So, you know, and I, I feel like he's a great actor. He's very, very diverse. Very, yep. very diverse and multifaceted. This year, he just came out with something called Jungle Cruise and just so likable, funny... I don't know if anyone really... He's the highest paid actor, by the way. Forbes does those lists of like highest paid actors. And The oh. Rock, Dwayne The Rock Johnson is the highest paid of everybody. I think he does it better than anybody else, the stuff that he's in. Whether it's typecast or not, he's, he's the best. All right, let's move on to number eight because we were talking about a wrestler. We're going to talk about another wrestler, this one. Roddy Rowdy Piper is on there for They Live. Uh, this, is, this is fun. You know, Cassius, are you a wrestling fan? Do you know about Roddy Piper? I do know about him. Uh, my knowledge of it is minimal, though. I mean, I couldn't, again, I'm not like an encyclopedia on it, but very interesting sports culture, wrestling. <laughs> yeah, no. And by the way, so for those that are going to go in the comments and be like, well, wrestlers aren't athletes. They are. Uh, it's sports entertainment. These guys do incredible things. And Roddy Piper, just an incredibly likable guy. This is the movie where, you, you know, you put on the shades and you can see those those kind of skeleton guys. The <laughs> You take it off. They look normal. You put it on. They look that. And he did that really, really well, so. It's late 80s, right? Uh, 88. Yeah, 1988. They live. They live. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. Let's move on to uh, to number seven. Man, we can't get off these wrestlers. Andre the Giant for the Princess Bride. Uh, of course. Cassius, you saw this. Princess Bride. I love this movie. This this is one of the one of the all time movies. And funny that you mentioned about The Rock, how he's seen like more of a, an actor. Since I was so young, I wasn't really watching Andre 3000 beat people up. Or did I say Andre 3000? Yeah, Andre the Giant. You're such a music, uh, you're such a music I, guy. I'm going back to the Donda. Yeah. No, but I wasn't really watching him in wrestling. So I definitely thought of him as more of an actor growing up until I really got into the history. But, uh, you know, when you look back on Andre's life, I think this is a pretty defining moment for his career. Yeah, oh, absolutely, absolutely. He, you know, he, he is a, a major part of this movie. And what's interesting, if you go back and you look at some of the, the behind-the-scenes stories that come out, you know, he, he wasn't at his, at, at his peak health. Like, he wasn't able to really, like, he's this big, imposing guy, but he, he was hurting inside. And so some of those scenes where he has to pick people up or do things, he, it was actually um, troublesome for him to do it, which you wouldn't think. So great acting on, mm. on Andre the Giant's part. Frank, I'll let you chime in on Andre. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I've never watched this movie. I've heard of it, obviously. What? But yeah, no, it's just... Look, Matt, you got to understand something about me is that I'm not a movie person that much. I don't... I, I am don't... going to send <laughs> to your house a, a stack of movies, all yeah. the superhero movies you have to watch, Princess Bride, I'll, I'll, I'll ship them I'm all to your sure house. I'm pretty sure if you run through like some even of the more legendary movies, I've probably not watched them. But look, Andre uh, the Giant, yeah, I think he did a good good role in this. I watched a, few, a bit like leading up to this recording with you guys. And what kind of, what it kind of made me think of was, you know, a uh, the great Kali in uh, mm. in the Longest Yard. Even though Andre had a much ah. larger role, it's just funny to see like the big men take on an acting role, right, and kind of get out of their comfort zone. So that's what it made me think of. But uh, no, it was a good. It was a good performance by him, uh, for sure, Andre. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Uh, this is number six. This is uh, Ray Allen in He Got Game. He Got Game. I. Listen, I'm a movie guy. I didn't see He Got Game, uh, so I can't chime in on this. <laughs> There's not much I can say about Ray this Allen one either, one but more, it looks like you know, Spike Lee involved. Yeah, you're right. Spike Lee. It came out in 1998. Uh, I don't know why this didn't land on my radar uh, over the years, but <laughs> what do we know about Ray Allen, Frank? Well, Ray, La Ray Allen's one of the more legendary uh, NBA players of all time. Uh, you know, he was part of that 
super team in Miami with LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh and all that. And he has a, a legacy behind him that only you know kids growing up can wish they could have. In this role, I felt like he was comfortable acting. I did not watch this movie at all either. But you know, you can kind of pick up on someone's acting ability just in a few glimpses. I feel like. And he, he looked normal. He, he, uh, normal. he looked comfortable. He looked at ease. And he looked, you know, he was kind of in his comfort zone, too, because he was playing the role of a basketball player as well. So that probably helped him out. So, so far, we have wrestlers and basketball players yeah. on this entire list. <laughs> Interesting. We're at the halfway part. Uh, let's see if we can change it. And we're not. It's Kevin Garnett for Uncut Gems. Okay, Boy, do He was terrific. Yeah, I was going to say, if you guys haven't seen Uncut Gems and Kevin Garnett in this movie, mm-hmm. do watch it. This is that Adam Sandler one. That's not an Adam Sandler movie by any means. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. And I thought Garnett killed it. Uh, Cassius, did you see this one? You know, this is a weird one for me because I have the most unpopular opinion about this movie. I put it on one day and I just turned it off after like 35 no! minutes. I, uh, there was nothing about it that that I was like, is something going to happen? Is something going to happen? But everybody <laughs> seems to love this movie. It's a... Uh, <laughs> It's anxiety inducing is what it is from start to <laughs> yeah, finish. I, I had anxiety. I was like, what what is going on here? But no, there is a nice little payoff at the end. So I would I would turn it back on and I uh, probably will give it another chance based on this because it's pretty high on the list, you know. So I it's, right. it's gotta be worth something here. Right at the midway point. Uh boy, we're going to another wrestler, guys. Can you, mm. I can't believe this. Watch Mojo. You you know there's more sports than just wrestling and basketball, right? Uh Dave Batista. Uh we I can't disagree though. Batista has come into his own as a actor. He's kind of like The Rock, where now he's more seen as an actor than, than a wrestler. Uh, he's in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's what he's listed on, on this list. But Guardians of the Galaxy, he's mm-hmm. also showing up in things like Blade Runner 2049, uh, the James Bond stuff, 007. Uh, Frank De Batista. Let's not forget, Matt, he played Aldar in Smallville. I don't know if you remember this. He was in Smallville for a, a featured episode mm. as a villain wow. that that uh, Tom Welling and, and Clark Kent had to take care yeah. of. <laughs> so you go way back with the Smallville. Yeah, I go you way back, like man. Smallville. I can. That's I go way real back. Deal. Way back. And you know that show? How long it ran? I feel like it never really got like the media attention, but it ran for like so many seasons. Anyway, you were keeping thing. it on the air. Just your household was the, was the, the station. I mean, yes, the, yes, the cable yes, box yes. that kept it. <laughs> uh, Bautista. No, good. I think he's. Uh, I think he fits the roles that he's placed in. I think that, you, like you said, he has that weird charm to him as like the actor, uh, the role that he plays, and he's kind of funny. He adds that element of, oh, of yeah. uh, comedic relief as well. So I think that in in you know that the role that he plays in the specific role, I think he does a great job of it for sure. Yeah, I'm absolutely. Yeah. Uh, okay, number three, people are going to be like, he's not an athlete, but I I will disagree. He definitely is. Uh, he comes from the world of bodybuilding. Uh, you know I'm talking about Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, of course. He's, not, he's only number three here. I guess that's respectable. If, or the Terminator is the one we have him listed as. I think that's probably the one that he shines the most. Terminator 2, I think, is my all-time favorite of his. But Arnold, coming mm-hmm. from the world of bodybuilding to acting, boy, he really tapped into something, uh, just providing these characters that really only he can do, right? Uh, every yeah. time they try to redo a, a Terminator movie and they try to... He's usually in it, but they try to introduce a new Terminator character. It's not it doesn't work. We we, we want Arnie. Uh, Cassius, are you a big Arnie fan and Terminator fan? I think you know you put it well. Uh, he's really a guy who does what he does the best, and if somebody else tries to do it like he does, it just doesn't come across the right way. Uh, he p- finds the perfect balance between being one of those big, imposing figures like we like Longest Yard, Frank, you were mentioning, uh, and also being like you know a good speaker. Uh, it, so he, I think he just meets it right down the middle. But really, was this a better acting job than Space Jam? I don't think so. <laughs> I'm still mad about space. Yeah, I, now, see, so this that's interesting, right? Because I think very few people could scare an audience with saying three words, right? Like you said, like the the acting, the the there, there's there's you should look at the Terminator. In a I thought you way. were going to do an impression, Frank. No, no, I can't. I was do that. so ready. You were saying, I was dis- like, that's a disservice oh. to all of Austria. <laughs> okay. I think. Um, <laughs> No, no, honestly, just the, the way, you know, the, the way the film is, is certain scenes are filmed at night, him walking down with two shotguns, the black sunglasses, uh-huh. the pecs that are popping, like, that 
<laughs> those scenes alone, there's not much happening aside yeah. from just Arnold being Arnold and walking down a street yeah, or wherever it is. But it's at least from a from a young kid's perspective, like when I was a little kid watching this, scared the crap out of me. But I guess that's a testament to to how he played the role, and I think you could argue that this could be even number one I, I, for how good it is. I feel. Do you, okay, is bodybuilding bodybuilding a real sport? Yeah, for sure. People are going to say it's not, but no, it, it's a. It's a lesser known sport, but it's definitely a sport. It takes athleticism, it takes strength, it takes determination, mental strength. If fencing strength as well. is a sport, bodybuilding's a sport. Fencing. That's how I <laughs> see it. Okay. Fair enough. Not, I'm, Fair I'm, enough. But no, no, come on. It was it, it was a great movie. I think like I would just watch like listening back to the trailers and watching this this top ten list, I want to go back and watch the Terminator. This is true. Yeah, no, I, I highly, highly do. Even the first one is, I always point to the second one as kind of the better one, but that first one you're talking about, because Arnold's the bad guy, and you're mm-hmm. right, he does scare the crap out of people. Uh, all right, number two is LeBron James for Trainwreck. Uh, LeBron. This one didn't man. do it for me, Matt. No? No. He's, yeah, mm-hmm. I think he's, I, what, why well, I think this is on this list, and boy, number two, that's real close to the top. Uh, I don't know if it surprised people that much, but he was, he, this is a comedy. This is Amy Schumer uh, comedy. And he has kind of a larger role. And he was he was quite funny. And, and I think the ease as into he got into his groove as the character and the acting was, was just kind of effortless. And I think that surprised a lot of critics. So maybe that's why it's so uh, so high. I don't know. You're it, right. It, it, I, I said it didn't do it for me. I feel like it doesn't do it for me to be at number two. I yeah. feel like yeah. the the role that he played and I mean Amy Schumer and Bill Hader are just terrific. So I think you match anyone up with those two they're they're going to see success. But I don't know, I feel like it was a bit like you said he had to ease into it. I feel like at least at the beginning it was a little bit timid. A bit like a little boy who was shy. I don't know, I feel like he was he was, he was out of his comfort zone. He was a Was bit, he? Okay. Uh, I felt that way. I don't know if the, the audience audience will agree. You could leave in the comments if I'm completely wrong. Once so he again, wasn't as adaptable as the wrestlers. He was a little bit out of place on the camera. I feel like, ah, man. Anyways, uh, maybe that's a hot take. I don't know. But uh, and, Matt, do you disagree? Well, the, no, that's the thing. When, uh, Cash just brought up something good. When you talk about the wrestlers, you know, they're doing a performance on uh, on screen and in the ring. You know, they're, they're athletes. They're doing these incredible maneuvers. But they're also acting, right? They're mm-hmm. these characters and they're, they're selling moves and, and doing certain things. Thing. So they so it's that's easily adaptable. Maybe it could be a little harder because you got to restrain it a lot compared to what they do. But uh, when you when you come from the world of sports, I mean, acting's so foreign, right? Yeah. So I agree. it's a little it's a lot harder. So I think a lot of people gave him props for even pulling off uh, a pretty higher than decent performance. I guess. All right, number one. This one surprised me. Can, Here we go. Can we go through? honorable mentions oh yeah the not honorable. not the actual i mean we don't have to go through the honorable mentions that were listed in the video but i just feel like while watching this movie other acting roles came up for me okay. i don't know if I, it's the same for you and uh Cassius and matt but i feel like i have a few uh movies that i'd like to drop all right here. well let me let me there, there are honorable mentions to this list, so maybe these these will scratch your itch frank but yeah let us know other ones uh jason lee chasing amy he was a professional skateboarder uh, Vinnie Jones, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, professional mm. soccer player. Love that movie, by the way, Lock, Stock, Two Smoking Barrels. Mike Ditka, Kicking and Screaming. Mm. I agree with that one. I felt like he was he was very good in that role. Kicking and Screaming was Will an, a, it's a great Will Ferrell movie. And yeah, I feel like Ditka played Ditka. that. Ditka played that, that like one. hard-nosed um, football coach, but yeah. for soc- on a soccer pitch, of course, mentality. I felt like he did well. Kind of playing himself a little bit. Uh, Terry Terry Bradshaw, Failure to Launch. Don't ever watch that movie. It's not very good. It's a <laughs> romantic comedy with Matthew McConaughey, and, and I had to sit through it for some god-awful reason. I guess Bradshaw was fine in the role, but that movie as a whole, not so great. And Kareem Abdul-Jabbar uh, for Airplane, 1980. Oh. oh, he was an airplane. Interesting. That's a cult yeah. classic, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So funny, so great. All right, Frank, who... And please don't say Shaquille O'Neal. No, no, no. That was horrible. <laughs> He'd that be on the worst list. That should not be up here. <laughs> Different list. Sure. It came to mind, but not for this list. Honorable mentions for me. I've got I've got two because I mentioned I wanted to bring up Ditka. And, and thank you for bringing it up. I felt like that was actually a good role. Um, Terry Crews and White Chicks. Hmm. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I think he should be on this list. Com- now, what's his athletic background? He's a football Is player. He- Played in the wow. NFL, and I think he had a stint in the CFL or maybe just the NFL. But anyways, he played college football, NFL. He, he was there. 
So that shows how big of a transition he's made. I, honest to God, did not yeah. realize that he was a football player. Yeah, yeah, no, he so he had that sports life before, and now obviously he's killing it over at America's Got Talent. But I felt like white chicks and other just that's a classic in my opinion, and he just <laughs> killed it with the robot dance and and everything like that. So I I felt like he deserved to be on this list somewhere. And lastly, Michael Irvin in the longest yard. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. We mentioned the longest yard. Yeah, you're you're right. There's lots of great performances there. Michael Irvin, Terry Crews is in that movie as well, by the way. Yeah, that's true. That, yeah, that was a good movie all around. I, even the small part definitely, mm -hmm. you know, made an impression. Yeah, there was a movie called, I think it was called Double Shots, Double Trouble. I have to do a Google, but it had Dennis Rodman mm. <laughs> in it. Was Jean Claude Van Damme? Wow. And I thought Rodman. Because he's this outlandish guy that we know. He was actually pretty decent on screen. Like, he brought that that outlandishness. So maybe that's an honorable mention I'll throw out, too. I have one, if I can just throw it out. Oh, um, go. Yes. Go for it. Mike Tyson in The Hangover. That was good. Yes! Hilarious. As, I as mean, as, come on. As far as cameos go? Yeah. Top notch. I don't know if we could really call that acting. I think he was probably completely legitimate throughout that whole movie. But uh, <laughs> so, very so what, funny. what's funny is that Watch Mojo... They put a little disclaimer at the top of the video saying we're actually judging them based on their acting capabilities, right? Like the the quality of their lines and their roles. Yeah, I feel like Mike Tyson wasn't. It was it was just Mike Tyson. I can't I can't imagine the producer and the the, the acting director went to him and said, "You got to play this role and you got to kill it." I yeah, think put Mike some Tyson, more emotion into that, Mike. Dude, let's get that again. And I'm also, too scared. also, if we're being honest here, Hangover and that entire series was just such a home run that you could yeah. have put anyone. Granted, it's Mike Tyson. He's a huge star. And they star, did put but just about anyone in it. It could have <laughs> been much. great with anyone. So, yeah. That, Agreed. Absolutely. All right. You ready for this number one? Okay. Yes. You mentioned Mike Tyson. Comes from the boxing world. Well, it's a boxing movie that's number one. It's Rocky. And the actor is Carl Weathers. Carl Weathers, who comes ah. to us uh, from the world of football before he got into acting. He was a football player. Rocky's iconic. 1976 was the first one, there's, and they're still going with the Creed uh, uh, films as well. Um, I don't know. Hard to disagree. I don't know if I put this as my number one, but Carl Weathers in Rocky. Frank? I think it is, definitely deserves to be on this list. I think that Carl put together a fantastic performance, that true villain role, that guy that kind of bothered you because you wanted Rocky to, to kick the rock his socks off, but just he was an, a, a, an ultimate competitor. Yeah, no, I definitely think this deserves to be on the list. Hi, I'd say top three. I like we we wanted to kind of maybe pluck a few from the, the the beginning of the list and put it towards the beginning, particularly Michael Jordan and Space Jam. I think those those two uh, close together. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was great. Are you a Rocky guy, Cassius? This is actually one of the movies like Frank. You talk about missing iconic ones. This is a franchise oh, wow. I've pretty much missed. Ooh. I'm aware of it. I understand that how much went into it from Sylvester's perspective, but uh, one I'm going to have to get back to you on with my first reaction. Interesting. <laughs> All right, I'll be sending movies your way as well. <laughs> yeah, I need Beautiful. a couple movies too. I mean, I'm not above getting suggestions here with the movies. I've missed a lot. <laughs> the, the Rocky series is great, and even the, the, the stuff they're doing now with Creed is, is also great, with Michael B. Jordan stepping in. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. any, any, uh, before we move on, uh, any athletes that you think should jump in the acting world uh, what's that soccer player, Frank? Uh, Chris, that everyone loves, Ronaldo. Chris, Cristiano Ronaldo. Cristiano I Ronaldo. I don't know how good his English is. It's probably you know he's played a fair amount of years in England, so it's probably holds his own. But and I, I don't know. He doesn't come across as the acting type for me. No, I saw okay because I I did a little Google maybe he, he maybe he's on a too hot to handle. <laughs> <laughs> he seems like that type of guy, like a like a, yeah, like a reality show. And what about David Beckham? He's yeah, got a big fan like base. That, that would be interesting. I think that he would he would probably be comfortable in that setting. I feel like he's you know he's always been in the spotlight. An acting gig kind of seems like a, a walk in the park for him. I feel like he could do anything. I th that's a good option. One guy that came to mind was PK Subban. I feel like he'd do a great job. Oh yeah, mm, there you go. I could see that. And you don't you don't really think of like hockey players as being actors, um, but I feel like he, he does good impressions. He does his hosting. Yeah, he's an exception. That. I feel like he's an all star at, at many things, so he would be a good option. I'd buy that ticket. Him and like a get him with a comedian like a Kevin Hart. They would be hilarious together. Agreed. I'm trying to think that of others. Maybe cool. someone else would come to mind. But anyways, that's my quick. How about Conor McGregor? Oh, that's a good yeah. one. Yeah, that's you a know, good one. But the thing is, as long as he's not playing, we we don't want another Mike Tyson situation where he's just playing himself. Then it doesn't really qualify as much. I don't know. Do you guys think he could turn it off and and do a character? 
Yeah, for sure. I think so. I if think, given I think, the right opportunity, he's probably like, I don't know. I, I feel like he, he's got a lot, a lot of other things going for him at the moment, moment particularly healing that broken leg of his. But yeah. uh, I think if you give him the right role and the right cast, like I think he could kick ass at that, at that position, yeah. Pun intended, give him the right cast. That oh, you? that's a good one, Matt. I didn't think yeah. of that. You are witty. And kick ass, it. pun intended. I mean, it's all <laughs> UFC related. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for breaking down that list. And as always, we want to know your thoughts, athletes that should jump into movies. And what about this list? Agree, disagree. Lots of wrestlers, lots of basketball players. I'm sure we missed some other sports. Uh, all right, gentlemen, thank you for joining us here on Watch Mojo's Pop in the Culture. Thanks, Matt. It's a pleasure. My guest today is incredibly talented and oh so funny and I'm, I'm smiling right now because he just makes me laugh. He's that kind of guy. Uh, Matty, how are you? I'm great, man. You're making me blush. I'm doing well, great. I had my first, uh, I had a, a cookie for my first time in six months. That was cool. Just what? now. Hold on a second. <laughs> you haven't had a cookie in six months? Are you on some sort of a keto uh, diet or? Uh, I had uh, I had a, a health scare back oh. in March. Um, had a tiny stroke, but I'm fine now. Oh my! But I, I'm totally stoked about this cookie that I just had. So okay, and you're allowed. This is six I'm months. And to, yeah, I'm allowed to have a cookie. What What's the brand? Maybe they'll send us if we Ooh. mention it here on the show. Maybe they'll send you a bunch. Oh, this is from a restaurant. Uh, oh. Actually. Sorry, tr- but, but I love Tate's cookies. <laughs> Tate's are my favorite. And they actually, they sent me a huge box, but I couldn't eat them. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, but I had okay. my issue, so, but I'm good now. Okay, great. Hey. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, before we before we started all this, we were chatting because my Podcast name is Matt. Isn't about cookies. <laughs> it's, this is not the po- cookie show. Although that could be a nice spinoff. Uh, uh, you're Matt. I'm Matt, but you go by Matty, yes. and my friends sometimes call me Matty, but not really. Uh, and then I was telling you that I'm also a Matthew, but with one T, which is kind of strange. Are you also go by Matthew sometimes? I got a two T's. I'm a Matthew. Yeah. 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 My dad's uh, super religious, and he named me after Matthew. Um, we are the gift of God, apparently. We, we definitely are. And I don't know why my parents only put one seal. I'll have to ask them. It's kind of strange. Uh, maybe because they're... My mom's French. Maybe that has something to do with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. One T is awesome. <laughs> I'm not going to diss your one T. No, there's lots of us out there. I'm not the only guy, Matt. Uh, all right, let's talk about you because... Uh, listen, I, I literally just watched this movie, Free Guy. And you yeah. have such a great cameo here that cracked me up. Uh, where you kept popping in as this gamer, seeing the shenanigans uh, go down from your home. You're you're yelling at your mom. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, that was, must have been uh, fun. And I wonder, are you a gamer in real life? Uh, I'm more of like a vintage gamer. I'm all about the vintage games. Um, What's vin- is that, Are we talking old school Nintendo? I'm talking like-, like old school Nintendo, Sega. I'm big into Sega. Oh, wow. Super Nintendo. Uh, the other one that I can't even think of right now, Super Nintendo, Nintendo four, N sixty four, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, Atari. Like I love vintage games. I'm more of like a vintage gamer. I'm, yeah. I'm so was this gamer. was this role fun for you? Because you're oh, it's super fun. Yeah, it was awesome. It was a uh, it was a last minute thing. Uh, I think they were they were in the editing process. And uh, they wanted to add this character in the scene. And uh, I had to keep it a secret that I was in it, which was hard. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it was really, I actually haven't seen it yet because I've been filming in New Mexico, uh, this other project for the past month. And I just got back. Oh, it's great. Yeah, so, the final product is you got Ryan Reynolds yeah. uh, in there. He's trapped in this video game, but there's so much more to it than meets the eye. Who also is in it. I know that Ryan Reynolds is in it. <laughs> That'd be funny if I didn't know. Like, wait, Ryan Reynolds? <laughs> Ryan, yeah, that Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> That's uh, great. But also, uh, Joe Carey is in there, and you interacted yeah. with him 
in a little show called, people may have heard of it, Stranger Things, right? Yes, yes. Tiny, small show, low budget show. Yeah, maybe people have seen it or could catch it some on some streaming service somewhere. Uh, people people uh, are, are, the fan base I've learned working here with Watch Mojo is that the Stranger Things fan base is intense. They, they really love the show. It's, 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 it's captured their imaginations. What has been the reaction from that fan base for you? Uh, you've popped up um, uh, in two seasons here. What have yeah. they said about Keith? Uh, they love Keith and I love them. I, I just think the fans are so cool. So uh, yeah, like you said, they're just like diehard fans and there's a reason for that because the show uh, it just it highlights kids that are underdogs and I think that really resonates with people and they're very very authentic kids and just real and yeah. I think that's why and also you know nostalgia like there's such a nostalgia for the 80s and you know a lot of what the Duffers do is like replicate a lot of things that Spielberg have done and they're they're total like nerds for for old uh you know nostalgia films which is awesome yeah um, so I think that's great and yeah I've done a lot of conventions uh for Stranger Things and just the fan reactions it's just it's it's amazing to watch it's uh it's really cool to be a part of something that's kind of like part of history to be honest uh it's it's the best feeling ever uh, that's awesome yeah no forever uh you'll be part of the show that's that's just a big blockbuster uh people can't get enough of it and there's more coming can you say you probably can't say do you pop up in any other i can't say uh the the hawkins uh lab will come after me <laughs> and the hollywood nda people will yeah i heard it's i heard they're over. not they're not very nice. I hear that's not a good experience. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hope uh, you take this the right way, but you have such a unique brand of, of humor. Yeah. The way about you, it's different than anyone else uh, out there, which is, I guess, great for you because you keep, hey, we want a, a Maddie type. Let's get Maddie. Yeah. Uh, but you play a lot of clerks, um, cash, cashiers, service jobs. Service jobs. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have a lot of these jobs? growing up oh yeah definitely i've worked uh i worked at dunkin donuts growing up i worked at a sandwich shop um i've done everything i drove an ice cream truck uh oh, wow like the dicky d's with the like in the east coast i grew up in the east coast so we had like the just yeah like a typical ice cream truck with the <laughs> the music and everything music. um wow. So yeah, that was fun. Uh, I've had so many jobs. I've been a PA on on sets. I've been a background actor back in the day. Um, I've done it all, man. Were you? And I read this, and you, this might be completely internet made up stuff. That you were a personal assistant. I think this is made up for Luke Wilson. Is that not made up? That is completely true. What I was personal assistant? Yep. Uh, back in 2005 uh awesome experience got to it was basically like you know i went to film school but it was like a my master's program in uh learning about film and how to be an actor and he actually gave me my first uh role in a film with him and jessica simpson and me uh i had a tiny part i worked in like a mail room uh with with luke and that was really fun. And another service. Brother, service. Yeah, another ser <laughs> service job. And then his brother was like, uh, Owen was like, oh, he'd be great for this other movie, Drilled at Taylor, which I played a 7-Eleven clerk. And that was my first uh, kind of like studio big film uh, that I got to be a part of. That was really cool. That is pretty cool. Hey, that, that, hey. Uh, and I was also reading that some of your inspirations uh, growing up, uh, one of your comedic inspirations was uh, Mr. Jim Carrey. And yeah. and you had a chance to work with him, if I'm not mistaken, Dumb and Dumber 2? Uh, yeah, I, I worked with him on Dumb Dumber 2. And that was, uh, you know, 
that was the most incredible experience ever to get to work with him because he was like my childhood hero. And yeah, I met him on that and uh, haven't washed my hands since. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's huh. gross. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, what, what's next? Uh, what's your future aspirations? What do you want to do? What, do you want to keep doing uh, the, this kind of thing? Because I know, and maybe this is a nice segue into some of the other things you do on the side of acting. Uh, you have this poetry book out. Yes. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm also on this awesome show called Reservation Dogs. It's on yes. Hulu yeah. uh, that people are loving. I'm in a, actually a movie with Luke that's coming out uh, called The Cleaner. It's coming out this fall. Uh, on, you can watch it. But yeah, I wrote a poetry book called Happy Birthday Every Day. And it's a collection of, of poems because I'm a bit of a poet. I'm not a bit of a poet. I am a poet. <laughs> well, you have your own poetry book. You're a poet. Yeah, I'm a yeah. poet. <laughs> I'm a poet. Uh, but yeah, uh, I love poetry. It's the best. I think it really um, just kind of hones in on the heart of what you do in life. And it kind of, it's just cool. It's kind of like poetry is like painting because there's no, there's no rules to it. You can, you can put periods and punctuations wherever you want and you can have a flow of a sentence. You can have two words. That's a poem, you know? Uh, I, just, I just love that. And uh, yeah, I wrote this book called Happy Birthday Every Day. It's about how to live every day like it's your birthday because every day is a gift, Matt. And uh, that's how we should live life. Am Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And hey, I can't think of a better way to wrap things up, uh, Maddie, it's been a pleasure yeah. chatting with you today. Yeah, it's been a pleasure to work with another uh, Matthew, who, again, we are the gifts of the world of the world. So, there's not many of us, I don't think. Matt is a <laughs> yeah. not a very common name. Nope. Yep. I think I'll have to. Yeah, I think there are like a couple others, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maddie, thank you so much for joining us today here yeah. on Watch Mojo's Pop yeah. in the Culture. All right. Well, that's going to do it for another episode, everybody. I want to thank Frank. I want to thank Cassius and of course, Maddie for joining in on all the fun. I also want to thank my dog for chiming in a few times there. And hey, thank you for watching and listening. Anything you want us to chat about here on the show, make sure you drop it in the comments. Till next time, I've been Mr. Hollywood, pop in the culture. <laughs>